Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you all. My name is Marin Axe. I'm the academic administrator for the program. I oversee uh, curriculum as well as admissions. I'm Len Morrison. <clears throat> My goal is to help you find meaningful employment, to connect you to, the, to our alumni and to our employers. Hi, everybody. My name is Justin Snow. I work alongside Len in the career space, also point of contact for all of our SCM alumni. And I've been with the staff for about six years. And Kate is also with us. Hi, um, I'm the program assistant. So I just provide support for the admissions process and the students while they're here on campus. Yeah, and then we will have later some other um, speakers today. Um, so also we have another team member, Lisa, Emma, they are running their uh, marketing and communication. And also we have a team of postdocs who are working here at SEM doing different kind of um, research oriented and education oriented activities. And on top of this, we have also then other um, instructors that we will see um, uh, later. So could we go to the next slide? Perfect. This is the plan, the agenda for today. Then we will start, I mean, visualizing where you will end up if you follow our journey. Hmm? So then uh, Len will share the career outcomes. Then what will be your path hmm, to become a top supply chain management professional? This is what we intend to, to do. And then what will be, what are the next steps? Uh, so how you should apply to our program. So Len, then where they will end up? Sure. <clears throat> so I know it's hard to imagine uh you know where you'll end up but our focus is clearly oriented towards helping you find meaningful employment challenging employment where you'll learn where you'll grow and um you know i have to say i've been doing um career support career advising for graduate students mba students for over 20 years this is the best program the greatest program i've ever been associated with um largely because of the strength of the alumni. It's enormous, the power of the MIT alums in, in, in helping students find their, their next role. You all know that uh, uh, it's, a, you know, it's a great time to be at MIT, especially in supply chain. You know, companies, I think every company realizes that supply chain is now a strategic advantage, a competitive advantage, and they're looking for talent. And the first place they look for talent is at MIT. And you know, I, I can't speak uh, you know, more about that. Just this past week, we had four companies reaching out to us to recruit, Apple, Tesla, Walmart, J&J, &J, and Caterpillar, just in the last seven days. Like, these are the companies that wanna hire graduates from our program. You know, there's always gonna be employment cycles. There's always gonna be ups and downs, whether it's tech is up, tech is strong, consulting is up, consulting is down. But the one constant is, when you're a graduate of the MIT program in supply chain, your resume is going to be at the top of the pile. And I think that's just enormously uh, such a competitive advantage. Our, our focus is really who, who will you become? You know, I, I want you to take the long view. You know that we have the resources, we have the connections, we have the toolkit that every other program has. But what's unique about us is two things. One, we're going to work with you in a very high touch kind of an environment. You know, Justin and I meet daily with every student in the program, practically. I mean, certainly you're going to be meeting with us so many times during the course of your uh, experience here. Um, we're going to get to know you, your aspirations, your goals, and we're going to begin with an understanding of talents because, you know, honestly, I want you to take employment off the table. Uh, employability is is really not a concern. The focus for us is a higher level concern. That is identifying what your strengths are, what your talents, your interests, your values are, and finding opportunities that are a great match for that. But the easy part is finding the job. Um, and you know, this is our promise to you. Like I said, very high touch and and we're very connected to our alums. Here's a sense of our outcomes. This is from the class of 2023 that just graduated. So, you know, typically, you know, by graduation or shortly thereafter, we have extremely high placement rates. And, you know, this is regardless of the economic cycle that we're in. So we're just enormously confident of what we can promise, what we, what you can expect from us when you come into the program. Um, 
And frankly, as soon as you accept our offer of admission, we're going to be meeting with you. Literally, the week after you receive that, we're going to be in touch with you because we know we're an accelerated program. We're a 10-month program. We want to get to know you early to get you prepared so that by the time you graduate, you are in a great position. So we're going to begin making connections and um, and and making uh you know, supporting you in, in, in your, in your progress. So like I said, every school has a toolkit, but you know, year after year, the companies are coming back to us because they know what we can offer. So with that, I'll certainly have time for questions. Uh, feel free to uh, put them in the chat and we can answer them throughout the webinar. Thank you. Next, what is your path um, to becoming uh, a top professional in, in the field? So then this is our value proposition. Then just to develop world-class global leaders in supply chain management with an innovative MIT educational model. Every single word here has an important meaning for us. World-class, we are changing our curriculum based on what is expected from the real professionals of the real field. As you will see then, we have a close connection with the top companies all over the world and top departments in supply chain and top executives in the field. So we hear for them in a regular manner and what they expect to, um, what we should form, we should shape um, supply chain management professional. Global leaders is so important. This is why intentionally we have students in the program from all over the world sharing their culture, sharing their perspectives. As, as a global supply chain should be. Huh? Of course, supply chain management is our topic and innovative MIT educational model. So we here at MIT, we have the vision that your, our mind should work together with our hands, men's and manus. This is a, one of our most important principles. So then we love to propose experiential learning hmm, in every single, I mean, educational component that we are putting here bringing the best of the companies, the best of the applied innovation from all our instructors, but also the best from you guys. So then you are bringing your supply chain experience, could be a short experience in the field, hmm? could be two years of experience, but you are bringing your best and then you will share and then the collective, in, I mean, learning will happen. The magic will happen. I mean, gathering all these stakeholders with our educational model, right? And then, yeah, so then um, we're very proud of these figures. Sandy is really proud. And then we have been recognized number one all over the world by different rankings. So then ranking in supply chain management, master in supply chain management by the, their ranking, the QS ranking, global uh, ranking. Um, then number one ranking uh, also in uh, by Edu Universe all together with our scale centers. Uh, also number one uh, in by U.S. News, that is one of the most recognized rankings for the School of uh, Engineering. We belong to the School of Engineering, but we work closely with the um, MIT Sloan uh, School of Business. Yeah? So then we have the two uh, sides of the, um, of the key components in supply chain, that is engineering, but also business. Yeah? So then... We have, and you can follow two different paths. Mm -hmm. I am sure that you have already viewed uh, our website. Um, then we have, you have two different paths to follow. The two of them are intensive. If we compare with other paths that maybe you are thinking about, compare with MBA, for example, MBA typically is two years. Huh? So then in our program, we want to be intensive and purposely on supply chain. So then you have two options. You can go to the um, residential program, is a intensive program, full-time program, 10 months on campus. Um, you will obtain the uh, master degree. So then typically it's designed for early career supply chain professionals. So we have professionals with four or five years of experience, could be supply chain experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but all, if you don't have direct supply chain experience, please apply because I'm sure that you have a lot of strengths then then um, we would like to have um, uh, your strength in our um, experiential learning class. Then again, a customer career development as Len and Justin explained. Uh, and also then with the residential path, you will be eligible for OPT, STEM, work authorization uh, in the US if you are not um, a US citizen or US permanent resident. 
you have other options. Instead of being 10 months outside of the workforce, maybe you can follow the blended program. The degrees are exactly the same, coming from residential path or coming from the blended plus, uh, path, exactly the same. But for the blended, is is an alternative pathway. So then first you take the MITx MicroMaster certificate, uh, is um, uh, an online program. You can take your own um, pattern and your own um, cadence for taking the courses in the MicroMaster. Once you have the CFX, the exam, then you are eligible to apply to our program. So somehow we take the full term from the residential, we waive from the, with the MicroMaster certificate. This means that we join us in person in January, and then you are five months with us in a very intensive path here uh, in campus. So then you will graduate with the residential at the same time in May, right? So again, the difference, big difference is 10 months residential from let's say August till May, or five months in campus with the blended uh, plus previous MicroMaster, right? And then you will graduate exactly the same in May, the same degree an MIT master degree. We will explain in, in a minute. So then, yeah, as we mentioned, then we are very applied research oriented. So then we have uh, several labs that are part of our Center for Transportation and Logistics. Um, all our instructors, then they um, lead a laboratory where we are doing applied research, mainly with companies. We we'll love to do applied research. This is why we are here. Huh? So then I am putting here my lab, Digital Supply Chain Transformation, because we are providing in uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, but then we have also Food and Retail, Freight Lab, um, lead by uh, Dr. Chris Kaplis, Humanitarian Supply Chain Lab, Mega City Logistics Lab. We are working with the best companies all over the world, right? Including, I mean, FMCGs, retail companies, um, logistics service providers who are leaders in technology uh, and innovation in the, in the field of logistics. We are working with Amazon from uh, many different angles. So again, um, then we are bringing this uh, applied research uh, into the classes from, from our labs. Uh, a lot of publications. You can take a look to the website if you want. So then um, our, our timeline. Then, uh, especially talking about the residential program. Eh? So then you will start uh, with the onboarding. So once you apply, once you get accepted, then then you start um, once you are accepted because we start the onboarding, right? We are, uh, I mean, shaping uh, your uh, path um, that is customized according to you. Eh? So then we have the orientation in August. So then we start working on some recruiting preparation with Len and Justin the capstone introductions. So you will be able to select uh, out of this year, for example, out of 45 capstones working with the big company, the big players that are impacting the real operations in supply chain. Uh, I mean, we are talking about PNG, we are talking about Mondelez, we are talking about the Starbucks, uh, Maersk, so different companies that are, are, are impacting their field. And then in fall, we September to December, we start the proper courses uh, in supply chain management. In January, we welcome all our scale uh, centers coming from all over the world here at MIT. Three very intensive weeks, very global, I mean, with uh, supply chain leaders from all over the world. And then uh, from February to May, in the spring, then your electives, you have more than 300 electives that you can uh, select from. And then you finish your research project. And then we have the final uh, graduation, a beautiful moment with this picture. So picture yourself within this picture, right? I mean, graduating from MIT in front of the dome, that is the concentration of, of knowledge as we see here at MIT. What is the timeline for the blended? So here, then uh, you will see a different path as we mentioned. So then first you need to take MicroMaster, go there, review the, uh, what are the, the courses and the timeline. So once you have finished the, the MicroMaster, you are eligible to apply to our blended path. You are also eligible to apply to the residential if you want OPT. Huh? So then you can definitely go with the residential path if you have a MicroMaster holder. But the typical, I mean, in the blended are, uh, again, um, profiles of uh, five to seven years of experience. So then in the fall, in the you will be online, hmm? you will do pre-work, pre you are preparing 
yourself, we are equipping yourself to follow the uh, pattern uh, here at MIT um, and your education. So then in again, in the fall, then you will take some online courses with us and you will be doing your capstone project hmm? with one of these companies, let's say Starbucks. So then you will start, I mean, providing a solution for a real problem in supply chain for the Starbucks. Huh? And then in January, you join us in campus. This is when we start counting the five months on campus experience. So typically in the blended cohort, you don't leave your jobs. Right then, you I mean request a, a leave of absence, and in your work you come here, you equip, you network, you enjoy the MIT ecosystems, and then you come back to your work. But also, if you decide to change gears and come and, and leave your job, this is another option. We will provide also a lot of recruiting opportunities uh, if you decide this path. So again, January scale, you join the residential program, you join the scale program. And also in a spring, uh, all these electives um, and you continue with your capstone project. And at the end, you will receive the, uh, I mean, the same, exactly the same uh, degree, the same um, master degree than the uh, residential program. Here, the post program is that then you will continue working with us. We will continue providing recruiting services here with Len and Justin. So then, uh, then until you you will get your your job, you decide to change it, the the job. Yeah. So then, next slide is the curriculum. I want to go quickly because we want to make sure that they will have time for you to ask your questions, and also then um, then we will be um, we are recording again this this webinar so then you can uh, visualize again and then stop where you want to stop. So this is our curriculum in a nutshell. So then we are having the fall term that it, it is a little bit changing if we compare residential and, and blended. So, but then I will go more with, again, in the fall term, it's mainly residential. So then again, logistic systems, we are working about data. Data analytics is important, but we are not a master in analytics, but we work with the most advanced techniques for analytics in supply chain domain, yeah. Um, we are, you are gonna have also supply chain design core course and you start your capstone project. Maybe you will have some elective here or in Sloan, uh, um, starting IAP in January. Uh, IAP is a very coined term here, is independent activities program, something like this. So then, yeah, uh, and it's, it's January, it's mainly January. We are gonna welcome all the students from scale, from Europe, Zaragoza, Luxembourg, China, uh, Latin America. We welcome here 200 students coming from all over the world with a very exciting um, program of activities, leadership speakers, very top speakers, their entrepreneurs, some competitions, we love competitions, supply chain challenges with data and real challenges from real companies. Eh? And then you would, I mean, put another dimension of your, of your network eh? with the global scale network. And then spring, as I mentioned, so then typically um, we pay a lot of attention to writing and presentation communication skills in the supply chain domain, um, uh, data science and mature learning. We pay a lot of attention to mature learning and artificial intelligence in supply chain. Again, this is what we are hearing from our partner companies and the executives we are working with. So then every year we are reshaping uh, according to the latest trends, the latest methodologies in artificial intelligence. And all of us, all the instructors, we are working with artificial intelligence from many different angles. Uh, and this is the beauty of MIT. We are totally working with the real world in order to bring it into our class. Then uh, in the spring, we are also having electives, finance electives, supply chain electives, and also management electives. So again, a, a beautiful, I mean, portfolio of choices you can take here. 90 units in total, but typically the students are taking more than 90 units. Eh? So this is, uh, you can customize your path, I mentioned. Then you can take more than 300 L classes all over MIT hmm? uh, on top of our core curriculum. So these are some of the courses that we offer that are electives in supply chain, but again, on top of that, I mean, the College of Computing, AI or maybe the um, um, Sloan School of Management. Yeah, different kind of electives. So here you have some of them. So then going to the path you can follow. I mentioned that then you can follow residential path, 10 months mainly, blended, plus, blended path together with MicroMaster, then a five month in campus, very intensive, the same degree. But you can select two kinds of degrees. 
then you can, from both residential and from vended, then you can go with the Master of Applied Sciences, then this is our preferred path. But also, if you want to do more kind of research, then you can go to the Master of Engineering and Supply Chain Management. So then we know what is the itinerary you will follow. Again, we recommend, uh, we equip you more to go to work in a company. This is why we, the Master of Applied Sciences in Supply Chain is, is the preferred path. But then you can make the selection to go to the Master of Engineering if you are, um, you are especially motivated by research. So then, um, so then, uh, Maren, would you like to share the MIT experience also from your experience at MIT? Yeah, thank you so much, Maria. All right, everyone. So Maria uh, and Len talked about, you know, how you're going to look at the end of this program, where you're going, where your career is going to take you, and then um, how you're going to get there academically. But, you know, that's only one aspect of our program. We also have a vast MIT experience that you uh, get to partake in, whether you're here as a blended student for five months or as a residential student for 10 months. So... Um, this is our beautiful campus, and uh, as we've talked about, the mission of MIT, you know, we live by this mission. It is a part of everything that we do here. Um, you know, we want to advance knowledge and educate students in science, technology, and other areas of scholarship to best serve the nation and the world in the 21st century. So this is the community that you will be joining. Um, you will have the opportunity to engage across campus, especially as uh, as you're here physically on campus. Um, you will be able to engage with students across all different schools, all different walks of life within your cohort, but also um, within the School of Engineering, within the larger MIT community as well. Um, we also, um, as part of our community building process, uh, we take you on a, a trek. Um, we have in the past years gone to Panama and uh, to San Francisco um, just to, uh, you know, give you some industry knowledge um, and connections. Um, it's also a really wonderful bonding experience. Um, this is my first year on the team, and I'm really looking forward to uh, going on the trek this year. Um, so it, this is a really uh, great time for our students to kind of build those relationships within the, within the cohort and also within the industry. Um, while you're on campus, you know, there are plenty of student clubs and activities to take advantage of. Um, in our building, we actually have the Martin Trust Center for Entrepreneurship that many students like to engage with. Um, and one of our uh, electives, uh, or sorry, one of our core courses is also taught by Paul Cheek, who is the executive director down there. Um, there are many of uh, our students take advantage of the Sloan clubs and activities. Um, as our program does cross over with many of the Sloan course offerings, um, and there are some areas of interest that overlap. So why should you consider the MIT SEM program? Well, you can take only 10 months or five months away from work. It's an accelerated program. You only need to stop working for a short period of time, and then you can come back with more value to add to your industry. Um, we have comparable salary outcomes to every uh, top MBA program. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit more specific and a little bit uh, more accelerated to, to get you where you're going a little bit quicker. The SCMR, or the uh, residential uh, program, does offer OPT, and um, that's up to three years of U.S. work authorization if you're an international student looking for that kind of opportunity. This is a cohort experience. I talked a little bit about it, but really you are going to be a part of a very clear and um, well-bonded uh, cohort when you come to campus. Um, you will have 40, about 40 students in the residential cohort. And then in the spring, you'll, in, you'll double your size uh, and the blended students will join you. Um, so that's a really wonderful network that you get to build uh, and experience. And then, as I mentioned, we have study tracks uh, available that, you know, allows you to build your global network. So we've now talked about the whole program, the whole experience at MIT, um, how do you get there? How are you going to uh, get into this program? Well, you're going to apply. We're really looking forward to seeing all of your applications. So here are uh, the brief rundown of our application requirements. You know, for the residential only, we are looking for you to either have taken the MicroMasters program uh, or uh, the GMAT and GRE, um, as well as a written statement of objectives. For the blended program, um, you know, we are looking at your performance in the uh, MicroMasters uh, program, as well as on the exam for that program. And then uh, your project proposal. So you will need to submit a two-page description for your capstone project. 
For both of these programs, um, we do require uh, the IEE LTS or the TOEFL uh, if you're from a non-English speaking nation. Um, a video statement is required, a resume, letters of recommendation, and your undergraduate transcript. We do look holistically at all of these things. So here are some tips. Your video statement, first of all, should be two minutes long. Please do not make it longer than two minutes. Um, this serves as a personal introduction to the admissions committee, and it's really an opportunity for you to demonstrate who you are and tell us about yourself. Um, talk about your personal experiences, but also your professional accomplishments. Really try to be yourself. Don't read a script if you can avoid it. We want you to talk to us. We want you to be yourself and be um, authentic. Um, and just try and have a good time with it. I know it's kind of nerve wracking, but we suggest practicing just a little bit before you do it. Um, just use your webcam to record your video. Um, you could use Zoom, you could use anything really uh, just to make sure that you can record it. And then just make sure you know you're well lit. We wanna be able to see you and we wanna be able to hear you clearly. Um, we also get a lot of questions about work experience. And so uh, Maria talked a little bit about this. Our typical student has between four and seven years of work experience, um, but it's a two-year minimum requirement. If we see a student that is or an applicant that has two years of work experience, uh, but is stellar and wonderful, we're, we know, we're absolutely looking forward to considering your application. Um, and then your resume, where you will clearly lay out your experience um, and uh, your professional journey so far. Um, we do have um, select fellowships and funding available. Uh, we consider all applicants uh, for fellowships and funding. Um, so you can apply in the early rounds uh, in order to kind of be considered a little bit earlier. Um, so these are kind of some of the, our fellowships, um, the SCM departmental fellowships, uh, that, those are within our, our department here. Scale scholars, um, which are scholarships towards our scale centers, which are located all over the world. Um, the awesome um, fellowship uh, is specifically for women applicants. And then the UPS fellowship is specifically um, for UPS. Uh, the UPS assigns those uh, fellowships themselves. Deadlines. So we are looking forward, like I said, we're really looking forward to reviewing your applications. And here are all of our deadlines. Um, so you can see that um, the, our first deadline is coming up on November 1st. We're hoping to see many of you uh, submit your applications before then. And you'll have decisions by November 28th. Um, and then our first blended deadline is December 19th and you'll have decisions by January, 2024. Um, the rest of our deadlines are outlined there and um, we are looking forward to reviewing. And now I'm very excited to uh, hand over uh, our current student perspectives, uh, Drake and Mayank, who are two of our current SCM uh, residential students, class of 2024. And uh, they will share a little bit about their current um, perspective as they're, they've now been on campus, what, three months? Um, so uh, Drake and Mayank, please join us, uh, turn your video on and take us away. Hey, everyone. Uh, Mike, I will kick it off. I'll give you guys a quick background and then maybe some of the questions that that kind of um, I'll consolidate and talk about those a little bit. Um, so I studied supply chain in my undergrad. I'm originally from South Carolina, but I've been in Chicago uh, since undergrad before moving to Boston. Um, studied supply chain from a business perspective and then spent the past four years working in supply chain consulting around um, logistics systems, kind of in logistics space and technology space, anything that overlapped with, between those two could be in my realm. Um, so I built a pretty good business background, but coming to MIT, two of my goals were kind of get a broad end and supply chain experience. So if you've had a lot of kind of domain experience in one area of supply chain, it's great to broaden out. And then two, on the kind of data and analytics side, right? Maria talked about it, everybody's using it now. And so to sharpen those skills, that was a big focus for myself. Um, I'll say one thing, a lot of the questions in the chat were kind of, hey, if I have this background and this number of years of experience, you know, would, would I fit in? I'll say the one thing, there's no mold of what the program's looking for. There's no specific experience that is being looked at. The point of coming to grad school is to have diverse experiences, right? So some of us worked in supply chain. Some of, uh, some of my peers were in venture capital. They were data scientists. They were in manufacturing. And it really adds to the program because if we were all the same, we wouldn't learn from each other, right? And so regardless of what your background is, if you have an interest and passion in supply chain, like definitely apply. That's what makes the program beautiful because we have so many different experiences that contributes to all of our classes um, and makes it just a lot more learning even outside the classroom. 
Um, so Mike, I'll let you introduce yourself, give a quick background, and then happy to answer specific questions about our experience. Yeah, hello everyone, and good evening to people who are joining late. My name is Mayank, I'm from India. Before coming to MIT, I worked as a manager position in automobile industry way back in India, in Maruti Suzuki, where I grew from uh, an engineer to a managerial position, learning from my cross-functional experiences there. And at some point, I realized that I needed in-depth knowledge in one field. So I pinned down to supply chain. Other option I had was an MBA, but I feel that to get the role, to get the outcome that I need, a specialized master's program in supply chain is better suited towards me. And then I applied for MIT. It is the best program that supply chain offer on this planet. And coming towards the questions that I see in the Q&A, many of you have like um, queries about like, am I eligible to this program or is my experience suitable for it? So the only way to get to know is talk to us, like reach out to us, we'll help you. And there is no correct answer. Like this program is really looking to having a diverse cohort. So the better, the, the sooner you apply, the better the chance to get in because there won't be like many people that have similar backgrounds. So it it is like that for this program. And I'm also looking for some questions that I'll be, I'll love to answer. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, um, maybe um, each of you can talk a little bit about what drew you to a graduate degree in the first place. Um, what are you hoping to do after you, you leave the SCM program? So my goal is to continue working in the industry with this specialized supply chain knowledge. I'll be able to understand the business perspective of supply chain in a better way. I want to improve as a person I was before the supply chain and with the challenging courses and the transformational learning that I'm having here, I'm sure that I'm in the right direction and I'll definitely reach my goal here. Yeah, so I mentioned it a little bit. Maybe I'll talk, because um, I looked at MBA programs, right? So maybe about our program versus MBA programs. I think it all depends on what you want to get out of the program. I'm biased. The, the cost benefit is is uh, much stronger with our program, right? And the, the beauty of it was, I knew I didn't want to, I wanted to get technical and analytical experience, but I also still wanted some of the quote MBA-esque classes, if you want to call them, right? And we talked about kind of the, the relationships with Sloan, you still have that opportunity. And so it's kind of the best of both worlds with our class in only one year. So career opportunities are comparable. You're still in classes with MBA students, they're in your group projects, but you also get kind of the focused supply chain experience as well. So I think it's the best of both worlds. Um, I wanted to broaden out. And so that that gives me the opportunity coming here to broaden out and kind of looking forward, um, get a little bit more end to end on the supply chain side. It's great to talk to Len. You know, I have an idea of what I want to do and Len and Justin have been very, very helpful in, in, you know, thinking through what's next. Um, so if you don't know exactly what you want to do after, that's okay. I know directionally what I'm interested in, but fleshing that out, on specific companies, you know, sometimes is tough. The The great thing is with the alumni, even this summer, right? I talked to Lynn over the summer. He connected me with alumni that I was talking to in July before I even got on campus. And so the alumni, all those conversations that you have allow you to figure out what you want to do next. So if you don't know directly what it looks like coming out of the program, that's okay. Um, it might change what I came in and what I do after it may not be the same thing, but that's okay. With that said, I do think as you guys apply, you know, put some thought into types of work you want to do after. Um, it's important that from the program perspective, yes, we're looking for you to have good experience, but also, you know, we want you to be successful after this and the program stays number one because the alumni are very strong. So put some thought into how um, you're going to help out the program while you're here as well as, as after, because that's important in your applications. I would like also to emphasize, I mean, what would Drake mention about the alumni, then is a very strong alumni network. So we have the senior VP of supply chain of Tesla. We have CEOs in our network and they are super committed with the, with the community, the MIT community, because they have been using the alumni when they were here. So then it is a very powerful alumni network that we cultivate. And then once you graduate, you will be in that site. So you will come back here at MIT campus, and then you will love to come back here to MIT campus to reconnect, to remember your good times when you were here, and also to hire. And this is a very, I mean, a very fruitful engagement. 
um, that we are happy with the alumni as, as Drake mentioned. Great, thank you both. Kate, do we have a question for our panelists? Yeah, yeah, we have a few that came through. Um, so someone's wondering what your favorite thing about your experience so far has been as the semester started related to the environment or classmates or your classes, like maybe what's your favorite class? Great question. Drake, do you want to start us off? Yeah, uh, I'll list a couple of things. Um, so one, I love that our class is so international. So we're 60 or 70 percent international. And so it feels like there's a holiday in some part of the world, you know, once a month or once every three weeks. And so I just learned culturally so much more. Um, so there is a social side to it, right? We work hard, but there's also a lot of social aspects to it. Um, we have, you know, social event leads, stuff like that. So the international aspect is a lot of fun. Um, going on clubs. So I'm learning to row right now. And so Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm up at 530 in the morning on the Charles River. And so there's a lot of opportunities like that. A lot of my peers have learned to sail. Um, so that's a ton of fun. And the clubs are kind of open to all of us, right? Um, my favorite class, people love or hate this class. It's called System Dynamics. It's a lot of work. I spent a lot of time on it, but it's really interesting kind of moving from, especially in supply chain context, you know, if we make this decision, what are the four unintended consequences that, that are going to affect us. So kind of circular thinking versus um, kind of linear thinking. It's a, just a completely new way to think about things. Um, so I'm really enjoying that class. Yeah, for me, I'm really enjoying uh, logistical systems. It is a core course of supply chain management. Very important. Chris Kaplis is taking it. I really love the way he teaches. And as far as Boston is concerned, yes, I'm also exploring Boston very much. The walk and the run Besides the Charles River, it's amazing. Like everybody's exploring it. And yeah, the main thing which I enjoy is the diversity of the program. Like, you know, you are getting to know about the diversity, how supply chain functions and the way people like end of the day, supply chain is people's job. So you need to understand every aspect of like whatever chance you get to understand people that it, that it is. And this program offers you that the diversity. It is the most favorite thing that I really enjoy. Another question is, how busy is your class schedule? So how many classes do you take a day? What does your week kind of look like in general? Yeah, so it depends on how much credits are you taking. Like if you are taking a moderate credits, like you can be having one or two classes from Monday to Thursday and recitations on Friday. And if you are like choosy and if you're taking less credits, like moderately, then you can have maybe a day off. Like I have my Tuesdays off. So I use that day to cover my homeworks and assignments and rest of the day I have classes. Yeah, just real quick. So I, we also have these half terms and so it gets a little bit more nuanced, um, but I have three classes on Monday, Wednesday, and then one on Tuesday, Thursday. The rest of the time is pretty much spent in group projects. It's a lot more group projects. And so you're still working. It's not like you're going to class. Uh, there's a lot of preparations for the classes. Um, so yeah, you're spending time, even if you're not in class, still doing work. But there is time for social stuff. You're not working, you know, 90 hour weeks um, just on classwork. I mean, this is MIT. This is a rigorous program. We would expect that you all be working hard, uh, but also playing, of course, because this is your one year to make the most of it. Um, Maren, just to emphasize here that then the, the minimum for, for graduation is 90 credits, yeah. but we allow uh, up to 120 credits. So it means that then you can customize the effort you want to put without any extra money. Yeah, if it's the typical question, oh, I'm going, I'm going to pay more. No, then you have the freedom to decide which kind of load you want to do. Because maybe some of you, you want to take leadership in the clubs or maybe to do more networking or more recruiting than others. So then you can customize your pure academic effort with other activities you can run here at MIT. That's a really great point, Maria. And also uh, a thing that I heard from both Mayank and Drake is that you know, you're know you taking classes um, in specifically in supply chain, like supply chain logistics, which Mayank mentioned, and then also system dynamics, which is actually a Sloan course um, that Drake is taking right now. Um, so that just kind of emphasizes that you can be taking classes across MIT. It does not have to be only within our specific school. You are, uh, as an MIT student, you are open to take classes wherever you want. All right, any other questions, Kate? Um, someone's wondering about your experience so far with career consulting and job fairs. Maybe you can talk about some of the companies that have come in and talk to your class. Yeah, I can start on this one. Um, so I'm in a, the process of interviewing right now. So have some interviews next week. So it does start fast. I will say one thing that was mentioned is, you know, if you're going to get a job employability. It's not um, something that you should stress about. 
I think one of the things that has surprised me a little bit is how holistic the program is of don't worry about getting the job, like think about what you want to actually do. And so during orientation, we have um, kind of strengths assessments and then a coach come in and talk us through. It, it's much more about your skill development and how you want to think about things and how you present yourself, what you want to do, and then how, to art, how do you articulate your strengths of um, why you would be able to do that. And so I think that's maybe one thing, right? There's all these companies coming here. We have career fairs through MIT. Um, I think I've just been pleasantly surprised on the overall development, not just, hey, get a job and then kind of move on, check them off the list and they have a job and they're fine. Um, even with alumni, right? They still have access to Lynn and Justin to reach out, um, which, which is really nice. It does get intense when you manage your capstone in classes and uh, recruiting, but I'll say just it, it, it's really helpful to have a clear idea, you know, as you figure out what you want to do next, first thing, I have no idea. And then, um, you know, just figuring it out, that's more stressful. Uh, I think the career services at this program is really amazing. Justin and Len, they provide feedbacks for everything. Like as soon as I got my admit, they were in touch for improving our resumes and what works in US versus what not works in US. That's the thing because we are specifically looking jobs in US. So everything has to be customized according to US. And after we came here, like we had constant meetings, understanding ourselves, like they have helped us to understand ourselves better to leverage our strengths and look for a goal that will suit well for our purpose. So they are doing great job at this. And I don't think any other college provides support of this extent in supply chain. So this is really amazing. One other quick thing I'll add. So um, I'm looking at consulting and some of my other peers are, I think in addition to the career services, having that diverse cohort, like when I'm doing case prep with my peers, they th see things that I haven't seen and I see things they haven't seen based on our experiences. Um, so even from your peers in the class, there's a lot of uh, just encouraging people um, in their application process. If one of us had an interview and somebody else has it the next day, you know, helping, you know, here's how you can think about prepping for it. Um, but also having those varied backgrounds definitely helps people uh, to get jobs, right? We're stronger because we have diverse backgrounds. I'll also add a thing to it. Like since we have come, like every week there is a company coming, we have coffee chats, we are getting perspective of what alumni are doing from MIT SCM and what are the goals that we can have in mind after this program. So yeah, and MIT Career Fair, you can attend Howard Career Fair. So it's open to all the students, it's a very good way to network to organizations and see what what works in U.S. and what doesn't work. All right. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us. Um, and um, everyone, uh, please join me in thanking uh, Mayank and Drake for sharing their perspectives. And thank you, everyone, for your really awesome questions. Um, but we are um, coming towards the end. So if you need to hop off, it is no problem. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much.